Am să rog în continuare pe domnul profesor Gherda Zibăgăr să ne prezinte lucrarea țesâturile în patologie, unde și cum le abordăm. Domnul profesor. Buenas ziua, dear colleagues. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, present you my lecture in uh, Romanian, so I hope you can understand my English. Uh, Professor Forna was asking me, uh, please do a clinical lecture. And I tried to stick uh, to this request. And I would like to make you participate a little bit with my personal experience in my dental clinic uh, talking about tissues for implants, where and how to get. And let me first define what are the success criteria for dental implants. It's a long-term implant survival. It's functional integration into the oral system. It's the aesthetic integration into the orofacial complex. We want to have physiologic conditions at bone and soft tissue level. And of course, the maintenance methods around this implant rehabilitation should not change compared to natural teeth. This all we can define as quality of life which exists in function of time. And is this threatened by bony defects or by local infections or do we have problems if the bottle bony plate is missing? Do we depend from membranes bone substitutes of any kind, and do we need guided tissue regeneration? Well, I will try to give an answer to this question, Marks. Uh, ideal bone graft donor sites are the trigonum mandibulae, the implant recipient site itself, the apertura piriformis where you can get out, uh, which depends of the size of the human being between, between one and two DC, uh, cc either side, uh, from the tuba maxillae if possible, from the skull, I would not give uh, my yes to this option because uh, of my hair pride and probably the last I would choose because cortical bone is not the most optimal, the chin. And where do we get our CT graft from? Well, uh, from the tuba maxillae, which is contrary to what many times is uh, talked about and also taught to our students, we have very positive results described already by Siebert in 1972. And if we get our CT grafts from the palate, probably we might go into collision with the palatal artery, palatinal, palate artery, palatinal artery. Do we have alternatives to that? Yes. There are several, osseo, uh, several bone substitutes out of any, of any kind in the market, but we should maybe also consider osseosynthesis if with a mesh or microplates, this does not matter, we have any kind of membranes. We could go also for a greenwood fracture using a split crest technique. We could use different collagen materials or this is another option and I hope I have enough time in order to show you this last case. We don't let the tissues break down. What about this? This lecture is dedicated to my friend and uh, teacher, Professor Dr. Georgi Mühling. Maybe the elder of you and the maxillofacial surgeons, they remember uh, Professor Mühling. Unfortunately, he died of pancreas cancer at the age of 61 two years ago. He was a professor at Heidelberg. He taught me excellently what in private practice, what not compared to the case that we have so excellently seen presented by Professor Garfunkel and Donnerheim uh, in your private office without any kind of um, hospital structure around. By the way, just in order to remain in collaborative practice, practice we, which was highlighted also yesterday during the introduction, uh, in the future dentists might be able easily to detect pancreas cancer and uh, at this time save precious time in order to hand it over to other specialists who can treat this type of cancer. Let me present my first case. It has been a patient. Uh, a male, 
57 years old. He was a light smoker. He had good general health conditions, but bad oral health. Uh, as we can see from the radiograph, he had multiple tooth loss in the maxilla and the mandible. The function was low. He had an upper partial denture, which was in his mouth for 18 years and a half. And our treatment plan included immediately loaded implants in the mandible, bone augmentation and implants in the mandible and the maxilla, and the prosthetic solution should have been a porcelain fused to zirconia grounds and bridges. He is a colleague. He is a veterinary doctor and treats different patients for more hours. And how did we get from this mile to this over this mile to this mile? Well, let me tell you my story. This was the situation without the partial denture and uh, taking the bridges, the bridge of the right lower off, uh, some adjusted prosthetic uh, restorations, and he wanted, of course, also, despite his advanced age at 57, still be a little bit more beautiful. So in the lower right, we. Uh, had an incision right on top of the crest, put an implant into the area of the first molar. We were using a one-piece implant in that case and on the left side we did the same incision in crest. We uh, showed the remnant alveolar bone crest and put also here a one-piece implant. This was the situation when we cemented our final work in the lower arch. And then when he was convinced of the success in the lower arch, in his mind, because he did not know the newest literature, then he was also encouraged enough to restore and to rehabilitate the upper arch. First of all, you can see the situation after 18 years and a half. We went for a wax up, which was done by the lab technician together with the furniture of the, uh, with the uh, delivery of the uh, lower final bridge work and crown work. And uh, this was the situation compared to the denture. And as we can see, the arch is not very different from what was waxed up by the lab technician. But just drilling our holes in order to detect, we did not use a computer. We just did a model-based exploration. We found out that we would have finished up right in the nowhere. So what did we do in order to get rid of this very much atrophied man, uh, maxilla? Uh, incision in crest with a release incision uh, right where we have the ligament of our lip and this is what we obtained after we had reflected the, our flaps. And if you just compare in order to have sizes, this is a 0.8 part of a plier and this remnant alveolar crest has the width of 1.5 millimeters. Then we had also a remnant root, which was extracted. The patient was, of course, tried before surgery, or was uh, treated before surgery with antibiotics, in this case with uh, amoxicillin and added uh, clavulinic acid. As we have seen before, the same schedule for, uh, which was presented by Ali Garfunkel. And then we started slightly to split this bone. With what? Not with case surgery, but as I was taught in the maxillofacial department when I was working in this department for a couple of years after I had been a young colleague with hammer and chisel and with the capacities we dentists should have 
if you want to do this procedures and perform these procedures, but also other procedures. As dentists, we want to be precise. We had the option to put a 4.3 millimeter implant in the position of the first molar, second premolar 3.5, 3.5 canine, and 3.5 uh, in the uh, central incisor position. And then we sutured this up with a continuous suture, monofilament 6.0. This was the result after one week. And we can see, compared to the left side, that we just transported the buckle part of, well, this is no sponges bone there, this is just some kind of uh, osseous membrane, if we can define this like that, and have gained our space and our vascularity is coming just from the bottom, from the sponges bone, which is higher vascularized than uh, the cortical bone. And if you consider that our implants are placed just right in the middle of an all wall bony pocket, well, we know the ceiling principle also from uh, periodontology, then probably we can expect a bone filling without using anything else. No membrane and nothing else. This is the first radiograph after this. And then we proceed to the left side. And you can see this is a CPITN uh, WHO probe, perio probe. So if this ball is 0.5, probably we do not have much more than we had on the right side, but at a larger extension. And looking at this photograph, I could not evidence this with a photograph. This was a clesedra-like shape that we had in this remnant crest, in this area. So we could not split this. What we split it was, was split, splittable in the front area, it was 3.5 millimeters in the uh, position of the uh, first molar. We had also a little bit more than 3.5 and the implants were 5 uh, 4.3, 3.5, 3.5 and the central left incisor 4.3. So what about this area? Well. According to Siebert, which is the best donor site for CT crafts, it is the tuber maxilla. So, right next door to this second upper molar, we had the tuber, and we got a CT graft. You can see here the extension. We were just fixing it to this uh, um, flap and had it right in the position in order to have a homogeneous alveolar crest shape. From here, we got to there. After two months, we put our zirconia abutments on our implants and a first provisional, a first fixed provisional. Furthermore, this individually colored uh, zirconia abutments were then adjusted after having reached maturity of our soft tissues, which is about another two months, uh, to the situation we had obtained. This at all sites. This is the first provisional. Again, it was not very much aesthetic, but it was functional. So you, maybe you remember the intermediate smile. And then the final work, porcelain fused to zirconia, to zirconia, to zirconia mesa structure on the left and on the right. And here you have the, the final results. We have a little deficiency in the area of the uh, upper right canine and first premolar. I will show you the stability afterwards after almost 10 years, after nine years. Upper, up, upper arch and lower arch, and the final smile that you have seen initially. Probably this case 
could be treated because we had a perfect compliance from the patient. Probably we did not have a discrepancy between the mandible, the atrophied mandible, and the atrophied maxilla that Adi Garfunkel found in his patient. And this was possible to treat in a dental office. Here is the final radiograph. You can see the bone level and the stability after five months and a half. This is the radiograph after nine years. This is just a question of, uh, well, exposure of the radiograph, but you can see the stability within nine years. Many colleagues were asking me, how do you do? Because if we do a Greenwood fracture, we always lose our vestibular bone. And I can give you an answer to that. I had also this experience, even if I had no implant loss, there were also spires exposed. They were instructed. Even if you have a rough surface and you do not let the possibility to the bacteria to form a biofilm, then your implants will stay there in the same manner as exposed roots stay there. And to which, to which kind of patients does this happen? I will give you the answer, it happens to smokers. Oxygenation of the tissues might be a, a question. This is the result after nine years. And you can see that the deficiency did not increase. There's a little bit of refraction on the other sides, and we can talk about the size of 0.5 to 1 millimeter approximately. The second patient is a 63-year-old female. She was a heavy smoker. She was in bad general health condition. She was in a pre-diabetes state, and she had bad oral health. She was with our assistant, reducing her cigarette consume from 25 to five cigarettes. She lost 20 kilograms. Her high blood pressure regulated itself after that and she got out of the pre-diabetes stadium. We can see multiple tooth loss in the maxilla and in the mandible. The function was of course reduced. All the chewing forces were applied to the front area and we planned implants in the maxilla on the left and the right side. We uh, wanted to augment our bone compartment. We went for split crest and osteosynthesis and implanted the lower, low, uh, in the upper left maxilla and implants also in the upper right in porcelain fused to zirconia crowns. And there was no hope for this tooth and for this tooth and uh, there was no possibility to uh, recover this tooth with endodontic therapy. So let me also go with you through this story. But how do patients get into this kind of situation? And I do not know if this happens in Romania also. I can tell you it happens more and more in an economically and financially depressed country like my chosen home country, Italy. And is this the result of uh, less personal care? Is it the finances? Is it the time that we can dedicate to ourselves? Or is it all? Mobility, one, two, two, two plus, two plus, three. And she is not a lady who does not understand. She. Her social status says that she had a higher education. She is the director of a beauty salon. Uh, she is behind family. She lost two brothers-in-law very rapidly. Her son got bankrupt with, this, with his affairs. So there's a lot of also of emotions in a human life, not only teeth and dental rehabilitation. Of course, we were in strong contact with her diabetologist with her specialist in internal medicine and with her cardiologist. And according to this, she got medication and she was prepared also for the type of surgery that we wanted to perform. 
Her main complaint was, I cannot chew without pain and I have frequently stomach aches. And to what is this due? The resorption of the root of the canine is the, the virulence of pathogens. And in which condition does she find herself? Is she a working poor or a time poor or is it both? And let me talk to you about uh, the, our observations in Italy uh, in the years 2005 and 2007 compared to 2009 and 2011. While we had almost no emergency treatments in our practices, this increased by three times in this letter triad of years. We found increasing allergies against antibiotics, mainly penicillin and penicillin derivatives. The costs of the treatments, because patients are not used to stay in a prevention schedule anymore, increased by five times for treatment. And we had three cases more of pain again in our practices. This was the case. So should we adapt prevention and care strategies to our patient needs? And, uh, maybe compare consolidated to innovative methods? Do we have the communication skills in order to get our patients again into the prevention sensitive group of any kind, not only for teeth, but only for her body weight, for her sedentary activity, for her cardiovascular health and her overall health. We might review protocols and of course we are back again to pain control more than in the years before. Motivation and instruction is the dentist's daily commitment, communicational commitment I have written. And as I said yesterday, we had a department in the Italian Ministry of Health, it's called again pre pre Department for Prevention, but it was before Department for Prevention and Communication, which I found wonderful. We might need to go to new pharmaceuticals and new assimilation modices. Here you can see the dental graveyard extracting the canine and the second upper left molar. And you can see the result after extraction. This is all the bleeding that we had afterwards. Because there was an epithelial downgrowth. No blood, no life. Last train station for biology. And what we did was a careful debridement of the extraction sockets in order to get rid of inflammatory tissue and the epithelium. And what do you do if there is no buckled bony plate? Are you lost then? Would you go again for a piece of surgery where just for the vibration that you have of the device you lose width of bone? Or would you just go back to an 80 micron blade of a chisel? Well, this is again our option. And if this patient, and I can assure you, this patient did not die because the bone plate was not there, well, then probably we can also put implants into our patient's mandible or maxilla, obtaining the right primary stability, which was described already by 2002 by Horiyuchi, a Japanese colleague, giving a parameter of 14, 40, 40 Newton centimeters, and then by Paolo Malo two years later with uh, 30 Newton centimeters of insertion torque in order to have a predictable primary stability. Well, then this might work. And we went further hammering, of course, with the capacity that uh, dentists have, the skill that dentists have, until we had widened our 
pressed in order to place here a 4.2 millimeter implant in the first premolar area. Another one in the second, excuse me, in the second premolar area, and another 4.5 implant in the canine area. But what we had obtained as bone from drilling, from the slight drilling that we had to do, well, this was it. And then we just gave the op option to our osteosynthesis mini plate. In order to give stability to our soft tissues and have a so-called tent effect, which could then have been filled with a blood clot, and we know that a blood clot by us induction can develop to bone, to connective tissue, and so on. This was the suture, same procedure, monofilament, 6 hour, non resolvable continuous. This is four days, uh, um, day of, in, of surgery, four days, eight days and 12 days, 12 and 14 days, and after three weeks. And this is the healing that we obtained. A OPT after surgery. And then on the other side, we went further. Can we be minimally invasive also? Yes, we can do. And we can gain tissue. So we went for a single implant, 4.2 millimeters in this first premolar area. And in order to get rid of this open bifurcation, we just extracted in the same, uh, um, at the same appointment, these two vestibular roots. What happens? A little bit of widening of the breast. These are extraction sockets. How do they heal with bone fill-in, with connective tissue formation and epithelium above? So it reduces this open wound area. This is the implant in the premolar area. And we have already, in this phase, as we had reached, 35 and a bit more of Newton centimeters of insertion part. How do I check this? I do not check this with electronic devices. I just check it with my insertion, measuring my insertion torque with my wrench. Uh, this was the healing status on the left side in the meantime. So we gave a new vertical dimension with the immediate provisional. Not very beautiful, but functional. This is the uh, radiograph before we took the mini plate out. And you can see there are no screws here. It was just fixed, prepared a pouch on the distal. And it was just fixed with the uh, flap here in the, in the front area, close to the lateral incisor, and that was it. Is it stable enough? We will see. Then, just the day of extraction of uh, the upper right molar, we drilled right in the middle of this uh, extraction socket, up to five millimeters. This is the implant, put it in there. We had already had partial bone healing, but a mature soft tissues that could surround our implant at the day of surgery. This is the first provisionals. We did increase the vertical dimension and we can see what happens to this front area without doing what or by doing what doing nothing, just waiting. There was no occlusal load anymore on this front teeth, so the front teeth, by their own, just came back in their almost natural position. How do we get rid of the osteosynthesis plate? Well, uh, 
In this first case, I showed you that I can be a big surgeon, but I can be also a small surgeon. So a cut of four millimeters, excuse me, four millimeters are enough in order to uh, go there with my instrument, excuse me, and together uh, with this surgical spoon, I just undermine. I undermine close to the bone, so I can check also if there was bone formation above my implant, and there was bone formation above my implant. And I undermine just above the osteosynthesis plate. Then you do, here you can see, the insertion of the, of the spoon. Then I do nothing else than turn around by 90 degrees to one and the other side, my osteosynthesis plate, and I can instruct it without a big surgery in order to get rid of it. And then, then I go a suture, continuous suture. One knot. If you go home in Italy and had surgery, and you can tell your family members that you had 30 knots, then you are a hero. And you go home and you say, how many knots did you get? And you say, one. Then they tell you that you are a loser. So she was a loser. And then a little bit of aesthetics. <clears throat> we tried to freshen up the front. We have, with the lab technician, uh, uh, controlled if our abutments were in the right position. And this is the final uh, orthopendomograph before the crown and bridge insertion. And the result that we obtained after just working with a little bit of composites. We can be surgeons, but we can probably use also some aesthetical materials that we find on the market and try to get rid of what it has been before. A close-up, you can see here, after a couple of months, the result around the implants, especially where we did all this procedure with osteosynthesis and uh, bone and soft tissue ingrowth, connective tissue, of course. This is uh, the upper arch, the lower arch. She should have received the exchange of several fillings and another implant here. And she was asked by my hygienist, uh, why don't you do it? It doesn't cost you anymore. It's much less expensive than what you had before. And she said, I had no money. And she said, well, it's only one implant and it's a little bit of fillings. And uh, the patient then answered to my dental hygienist, which word of my sentence did you not understand? I have no money. This is the situation. But she is in the maintenance phase, she pays attention to what we did instruct and what we communicate to her. And this is again a close-up after a couple of years, two and a half, and the front area. And it might not be the finest and, uh, well, the most perfect porcelain veneers but it is an aesthetic result. This is what it was before, and this is what we obtained afterwards. This is what it is. In times of crisis and no money in your pocket, and the closest friends overseas, then you have to believe a little bit in yourself. And let me present what I had announced before, my last patient, my last case I would like to share with you. Can we do something in order to avoid tissue breakdown? And how do we do this? <coughs> He's a 40 years old shepherd, Sardinian shepherd. And uh, by 42 years, he discovered that it might not be too bad uh, to found a family and uh, have a wife but he wanted to be a little bit more attractive. His health status was excellent. He's uh, a diver and is diving for corals also, so quite deep in apnea. 
but his oral health still is bad. He has fillings, endodontic treatments, the absence of clinical crowns, 1, 6, uh, 1, 5, 1, 4, 4, 2, 5, and 2, 6. In the upper jaw, root carriers, chronic periodical lesions, and our treatment plan is uh, to do a laser treatment before uh, uh, planning and root scaling. We had planned an implant placement in the area of 1615 and uh, 14 and 25 and 26. Individual to titanium departments and porcelain fused, fused to zirconia crowns. And here you can see on the radiograph what the situation is. We do not have only uh, periapical inflammatory processes, but we have also uh, periodontitis, which we treated in order to prepare our patient for our surgery. And uh, on the other hand, he wanted also to get rid of this ugly fillings and uh, have this <coughs> endodontic treated tooth integrated into a homogeneous front. Well, then I said, uh, please smile in order to uh, understand what is his smile line. And this was the result. And then I said, please smile naturally. And this was the result, and after this I gave up asking for any kind of smile. And you can see that he tried, here it was a little bit more uh, natural, but he tried then to cover his defects with the angle of his lips. This is a front view of the situation. And you can imagine that also after uh, scaling and root planning, we still had pus. Uh, there was a natural, uh, excuse me, there was a natural uh, separation of the roots already, which made our extractions more easy. This was the only tooth to be recovered with endodontic treatment mm -hmm. and uh, core buildup. <coughs> And our question is, was also, uh, do periodontal pathogens disappear after full mouth tooth extraction? And Van Asche gives us a clear uh, answer in his uh, conclusion, saying this, it does not result in the eradication of all periodontal pathogens, but only in a significant reduction, just in order to answer to why in position 1.6 there was still a pus formation, probably because it did not depend only on concrements. And uh, do we need antibiotics at dental implant placement to prevent complications? And in a paper from Esposito, uh, he states in his conclusion, some evidence, there's some evidence, not a 100% evidence, that uh, amoxicillin given orally one hour preoperatively significantly reduces failure of dental implants placed in ordinary conditions. What is ordinary conditions, we do not know. Probably have to define this first. And it's unclear whether post-operative antibiotics are beneficial and which is the most effective antibiotic. Side and upper view of the right. And uh, you can see here that there was also apical post formation at this site. Uh, this is the left. This was a tooth declared worth to restore, to treat endodontically and restore. And then we went further <coughs> with our extractions. But first, let me show you and part, uh, share with you this paper from Schippach. Uh, I always used to, uh, I'm used to put my implants uh, more coronally than what is the recommendations from the implant manufacturer. Why? Simply because if I want to give a possibility to fiber integration, then I do not need a machine surface. We know this also from periodontology. When we debride our roots, we give to our roots with a final preparation of a 50 micron uh, grid 
per a micro uh, roughness, which is or is in favor of fiber integration. And uh, Schubach and Klaus have described this, and this is a micro rough uh, part, laser treated. Uh, in this case, where we can see perfect fiber integration. We extract our teeth and as we have seen before, we debride our extraction sockets. We get rid of the inflammatory tissue, which also reduces the risk of bleeding after surgery. Here we have a recommendation from uh, Yalsin uh, to use implant drills um, for atraumatic extractions and uh, this he did describe in order not to damage, excuse me this is a new uh, presenter and I'm not used to it, you might apologize, he did this in order not to damage the thin plate of buccal bone. Now. I do not know who was in the peer review, but if I would have been in the peer review of paper, I would have uh, asked myself, well, drilling in a clinical situation, am I really able to distinguish, and also with my loops on my eyes, a thin dentin plate from a thin buccal plate, which is probably cortical bone? Well, sometimes we find in the literature friends, of course, but uh, for me it's not clear if it's useful what they propose. And I already gave my opinion about a missing or non-missing bone plate in order to perform an implant research. This is the implants in their final position. But what did I do in the meantime? Well, I can tell you in some of the sites I did not even drill and in a very few sites, in this case and in this case, I was drilling. How did I drill? I drilled in the interradicular septum with a pilot burr and then expanded with bone chisels laterally. So I had my implants not in one of the remnant root spaces, but right in the center where the center of the, uh, at the center of the, of the uh, pre-existing crown. Can we do this in infected cells? And we have an answer from Melzer from last year and he concluded that high implant survival rates have been reported even when implants were placed immediately in periodontally or endodontically infected extraction short sockets. He says, in or. And what you have seen before is in and. Slight difference, but a difference. And provisionalized within 36 hours. This was the case. Initial primary stability, as I had said already before, was achieved for all implants and reverse torque testing at three and four months post-operative showed, and so on. Well, you have seen that there was one implant which was not restored. There, I obtained 25 Newton centimeters, but in order to give a support to the soft tissues, and together with the soft tissues to the former gingival fiber complex. This probably gives an answer to do the tissues break down or don't they? Vastorp, he did a review of the literature in uh, terms of immediate placement of implants into infected sites. We have another paper here and he concludes implants can be placed into sites with periapical and periodontal infection but they have to be thoroughly debrided as we did. This is the dental graveyard after extraction. And then you see again, are these provisioners beautiful? No. Do they save time? 
Yes. Do they save costs? Yes. An overview. As said before, we left this tooth without loading, but it was preloaded with the abutment. Again. And my first radiograph. And please remember, when you see the final radiograph, <coughs> the stone levels. He wanted a nicer front. He did not want a technologically and aesthetically, high technology, uh, technologically and high aesthetic front, but he needed a presentable front in order to get his spouse convinced. Well, this is what we can do also in a little bit more holistic uh, therapy, and this is the result. And probably compared to some lab technicians' work, nothing to say against this, but it needs a lot of working steps more, so the costs are higher. Uh, it is to consider if this is not an option to give the favor to. Excuse me. Then our titanium abutments, as I had planned before, and the crown work on it, also in this case, it was porcelain fused to uh, zirconia crowns. A lateral view of the left and of the right. And you can see here, if you remember, if, excuse me, if you remember, my fingers are too big. If you remember the uh, height of the gingiva before extraction, we did not lose. And if we lost, we lost a very few tissues. Probably because we gave a support for fiber integration. Probably we gave immediately a support with our provisional restoration to the fresh gingival fiber complex. Front. Well, full arch. Again, a radiograph after, this is four and a half years now. This is the lip support with the new front integrated and then I said again, I dared to ask again, please smile. And this is the result of his smile. And you can see the angles of the lip are up now and he's happy, he got married in the meantime. Uh, which is fine, they have a child. It's not due to my intervention. They did the rest, but probably he felt a little bit better. And just in order to give you uh, my personal statistics, uh, which has been followed up, up uh, for 10 years. I started in 96 with this protocol, uh, pharmacotherapy, preparation for the surgery, with debridement of complements, get rid of infection as much as we can, uh, have primary stability, or enough primary stability in order to load immediately, and in order, of course, to give also support to the soft tissues. And out of uh, 1,007 immediate implants with immediate function, uh, you can see in my statistics, 872 have been placed in infected sites. So as we have seen in the last case, uh, there were some uh, non-compliances, especially when it was about uh, drug assumption. And I can confirm what uh, is written in the literature that implants can be positioned successfully in periodontically and or endodontically infected sites. Systemic antibiotic therapy started preoperatively with amoxicillin or in uh, this case we are back to toxicycline again if we have uh, uh, antibiotic problems with uh, amoxicillin or penicillin. It might positively influence the treatment outcome and uh, the other I had said already before. And while after five years we had about 95% of success, uh, today 
or let's say in 2011 it was 97.18. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of ways to get tissues. And I told you also from where and how, but probably the, post, the best response is together with other specialists, having in mind the entire patient, communicate to the patient how can you behave, uh, not fulfill only the wish, well, we pull the tooth out and we put an implant in with a crown on it, but try to get into the philosophy of that you have to go after rehabilitation, again into the phase of prevention. Prevention of what? Of the diseases you were running in before, probably combined. We you know today there is uh, the last follow-up which was published in, uh, from the European Federation of Periodontology. It's tougher again the argument that there is a link between cardiovascular diseases and uh, periodontal disease and even more between uh, diabetes and uh, periodontal disease. There are papers out which say with only tooth brushing we can lower the risk of cardiovascular diseases. And we know that when periodontitis is treated that our patients lower their risk for diabetes. So probably we should also go in the future more and more in a holistic view of what is around us if we concentrate more and more like specialists on an even after years narrower point that from where we started and everybody does the same in a circle then probably we will never meet. If our view is broader then maybe our views may intersecate and we can really give an answer to collaborative approach. And let me also give my final result. I will share this with uh, Norina. Uh, I developed as the president of the European part of the World Dental Federation a so-called personal health card. And this personal health card is like a passport given uh, Professor Chabré yesterday he received one. I wanted to give it to Norina, but she will receive one anyway. And uh, you can also download it from uh, the website of the Italian Dental Association uh, or asking the uh, uh, European Regional Organization. We were investigating what is it about and that was what the United Nations were asking us, please collaborate in order to have a better outcome for the treatment of our patients and in order and last but not least in order to lower the mortality rates linked to non-communicable diseases. Well, I found a certain excitement among the European dentists and I was asking them, addressing them a questionnaire of 20 questions which included also um, should patients um, go for a screening, uh, for a detection of uh, um, C-reactive protein, should dentists assist in uh, 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 smoking cessations, uh, should dentists be able to carry out a blood pressure control, should patients be able in order to carry out a glucose, a, a um, HbA1c uh, control and so on. And today we know that from saliva diagnostics and oral fluid diagnostics we can know a lot more about our patients without being invasive also in screening methods. So the pa just to make a long story short, the dentists were excited about collaborative approach. Then I was addressing a slightly modified questionnaire of the same type to the cardiologists and the diabetologists. Were they excited the same? Would you say yes or no? Who is for yes? Were they less excited, the medical doctors, than the dentists about collaborative approach? The cardiologists were more excited than the dentists. And as a matter of fact, I have an excellent uh, relationship in my hometown. I'm one of the lucky guys working with the two departments that we have in my hometown. And the diabetologists were a little bit less excited, but as excited as the dentist. This was wonderful. And this was the base for the development of this health card. This health card, of course, has parameters which have to be explained. It's a so-called communicational tool. It's the start of communication between the patient and the doctor.
This is the nice thing. But then it was also a reaction to what was the final report of the Federation of the European Diabetologists who met in May 2012 in Copenhagen. And while in 2011 in May it was defined that oral diseases make part of the NCDs, of the non-communicable diseases, there was not even one word in the report of the diabetologists, of the European diabetologists. And I was a little bit angry. Why should we always be class B doctors? Margaret Chan, the president of the, World, of the World Health Organization, she said it very clearly that dentistry is the pioneering profession in prevention and medicine. So let's take advantage of that. And I was putting in there also a correct hydration of the body, water intake. I was also influencing or tried to influence a correct diet, which is not only a correct diet from the dentist's point of view, and I tried, of course, also to be in the same line with Michael Bloomberg, who was in uh, New York City uh, developing a law which is limiting the, uh, the service of uh, sugary drinks. So this is all what we could put in there. It was a little bit more complete and it was, as a matter of fact, it was expressive also for the dentist. But probably you know also that dentists should not interfere with diet, at least not in Maryland, where the state judge said if dentists are prescribing <coughs> diets for their patients, then they are just with one foot in jail. This is the controversy that we have to think about. So more and more, communicate anyway with our medical colleagues, probably can reach the goal in being collaborative and having a better rehabilitation, but also a better prevention for our patients. And uh, I thank you for your attention, and I would like to address to the Romanian auditorium, mulțumesc mult pentru dumneavoastră atenție. Thank you very much, Professor Zipperger, our Associate Professor too, for our university. Thank you for your conference. It's a, a challenge, of course, immediate implantation, immediate routing. You use this even in the literature. There are controversies in this uh, theory, but it is a real success presented here, your patients. Uh, patients, they need uh, rehabilitation too. We saw the problems with the uh, complications they had. And uh, of course, it is a success to make uh, an immediate implantation media floating. It's um, for the patients who are in hurry. We know that patients, um, <coughs> It's uh, if we can uh, say uh, the tourist uh, is somatology <laughs> for them. It's a success, of course. Thank you for your experience you gave us here for ADI, for your regulars you made there, for the card uh, you proposed to us. We have to follow this card, to have this card in each private. Uh, office of us. Of course, I felt this conclusion after this big Congress to to have and to order to the uh, our council of doctors to have this card and of course to be a password for all the patients in Europe and not only. Yes. Uh, I hope to help together in collaboration after, as you saw here, as you told us, through the projects in nutrition, and we'll see how to manage the patients with general diseases. Thank you very much. And uh, please take this excellent diploma for the Congress. Thank you.
I help all of uh, this song to come to FDI Congress because we have many speakers and of course presentation for in Istanbul. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Noi deja avem înregistrări multe pentru Congresul Etian și sperăm mai departe să putem discuta de multe alte cazuri care necesită reabilitarea 